Oh, look. More Codex. We're almost done with the Codex, too. Interesting. All right, so let's start with El Dorado. The myth of the City of Gold has its roots and legends told to the Spanish conquistadors about a tribe of natives high in the Andes Mountains. Watch. According to these legends, the inauguration of their chiefs included a ceremony at the banks of the lake Guatavita. At this ceremony, the new chief was covered in gold dust, and an offering of gold and jewels was thrown into the depths of the lake to appease the god that lived underwater. Late in the 15th century, the tribe was conquered by another tribe, and the custom of the ceremony by the lake ended. The conquistadors called the golden chief the Gilded One, El Dorado, the Golden Man. And the legend evolved into a legend of a city made of gold. Spaniards and other Europeans found the legend of the Golden City easy to believe because they had found much gold among the natives. The Golden City was never found, but the Spaniards did find Lake Guatavita and tried to drain it. They succeeded in lowering the water table enough to obtain hundreds of pieces of gold and jewelry along the lakeshore. They never found the rumored treasure in the depths of the lake. Makes sense. It makes sense. It seems. It definitely seems like a tale that they told. Like, oh, a lot of people told. To like just keep people keep them from bothering the natives. Let's see, let's go with the Maya next. Then we'll go to Masai Volcano after. The Maya lived in three loosely defined zones: the Maya Highlands, Southern Lowlands, and the Northern Lowlands, all of the Yucatan Peninsula. The height of the Maya Empire, empire was around 600 A.D. Their cities spread through Mesoamerica and varied greatly depending on the topography. They evolved as nature dictated, even in the tropical rainforests. The Maya excelled at agriculture, pottery, hieroglyph writing, calendar making, and mathematics. That's why we have that uh, Mayan calendar thing that happened. We're like, oh, the Mayan calendar stops at 2012, so obviously that's where things are going to go south, right? No. Um, and left behind an astonishing amount of impressive architecture and symbolic artwork, such as the stepped pyramids, similar to the architecture of the Toltec. Most of the great stone cities of the Maya were abandoned by 900 AD, and by the time of the Spanish conquest, the Maya were primarily living in small farming communities. Development persisted in the northern centers, and the cities of the northern lowlands in Yucatan continued to flourish for centuries more. Some of the important sites in this era were Chichen Itza, Uxmal, Edzna, and Coba. After the decline of the ruling dynasties of Chichen and Uxmal, Mayapan ruled all of Yucatan until a revolt in 1450. After this point, the area degenerated into a competing city-states until Yucatan was conquered by the Spanish. The Spanish conquest of Yucatan lasted 170 years. Unlike the Aztec and Inca empires, there was no single Maya political center, therefore the conquistadors had to subdue the numerous independent Maya states' polities one by one, many of which fought fiercely. The Maya survived the Spanish colonization. The Maya and their descendants formed sizable populations throughout the area, Maya area and maintained a distinctive set of traditions and beliefs. Millions of people still speak the Maya language. I actually didn't know that. I that's that's a really cool detail. Glad that 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 culture survived. That seem that's really cool to me. All right, the Masaya volcano. The Masaya volcano, or the Masaya caldera, was formed 2,500 years ago by a basaltic eruption of the Las Sierras shield volcano. The Masa the Masaya caldera covers six by 11.5 kilometers and has all of 13 openings through which there is a constant emission of sulfur dioxide gas. Masaya's last eruption of lava was in 1772. Since then, several minor explosions have occurred in addition to the emissions of gas. The Masaya was feared both by the indigenous people and by the Spanish conquistadors. It is told that the locals sought to appease the spirit of the volcano by sacrificing young girls, throwing them into the mouth of the volcano. The Spanish conquistadors at first thought the glistening lava was liquid gold. Yeah, that, yeah we, I, that's a good thing I put the bucket in. That would have been horrible for one of my people. But as they experienced the heat and the poisonous fumes from the heart of the volcano, they named it La Boca del Inferno, or the Mouth of Hell. They also erected a cross on the edge of the crater and named it La Cruz de Bobadilla, after Father Francisco Bobadilla, a Jesuit priest. By doing so, they hope to exorcise the devil. Yep, you can't exorcise the devil with the devil's nature, unfortunately. Alright, Zipe Totec. The name Zipe Totec means Our Flo Lord the Flayed Man. And he was usually depicted as a flayed man clad in his own skin. Okay, so this was the guy that scared us out of El Dorado. He was the Aztec god of agriculture, spring, and seasons, and the symbol of the death and rebirth of nature. Zipetotec was also the god of the east and patron of goldsmith. He was called the flayed god because according to myth, he flayed himself to stimulate growth in both nature and man. I don't know how that correlates, but alright. 
When he had shed his skin, he would reappear as a shining golden god. Oh, El Dorado, then, as well. Each year in the beginning of the spring, he was honored by human sacrifices. That's not fun. The priests removed the hearts from their victims while they were still alive. Then the priests flayed the bodies and put, the, put on the skins, which had been colored yellow. Jesus Christ. The yellow skins were called Teoquitlaquemitl, golden clothes. Other victims were fastened to a frame and killed with arrows. The blood dripping from these sacrifices symbolized the fertile spring rain. These rituals symbolized the renewal of the earth and the budding of life. He was also known by the names Tlatlauka, Tlatlaki, Tezcatlipoca, the red smoking mirror, and Yoalahuan, the night drinker. Okay, and then Zolotl is the guide of the dead. Not the god of death, but just the guide. Zolotl was known as the twin or the lord of the west and was the god of fire and bad luck. He was, okay, so I was wrong. Oh, no, no, I, was like, I see dog deity. He was Quetzalcoatl's twin, sons of the virgin Quatlaque, and Quetzalcoatl's double. He was the dark personification of Venus, the evening star, and he guarded the sun on its journey through the underworld at night. He was a dog-like deity, often depicted with ragged ears, and was identified with sickness and physical deformity. He was also sometimes depicted as a skeleton of or a man with the head of a dog. Dogs were considered filthy and immoral in the Mesoamerican cultures, and likewise, twins were considered a, bat a type of deformity. Aww. I love dogs. Twins are cool. Aww. Love dogs. That, oh, that does make kind of sense, though, because I remember... Um, I remember correctly, there was like a specific breed of dog that the Aztec peoples and some of the Meso other Mesoamerican people peoples bred specifically to eat. I, I can't remember how accurate that is, but I do remember reading that in like a in a book that was pretty respectful to like learn about the Aztec uh, about the Aztec uh, peoples. It's just like yeah, um, they bred dogs to eat because they didn't because they weren't like pets. They were just like they were another type of cattle type thing. Not cattle, obviously, but you know. According to myth, he accompanied Quetzalcoatl to Mictlan, the land of the dead, to retrieve the bones from those who inhabited the previous world, Nahui Atl, in order to create new life for this, this world, Nahui Olin. And he assisted Quetzalcoatl in bringing humankind and fire from the underworld. In another creation myth, it was Zolotl who brought a bone to the gods, who sprinkled it with some of their blood and transformed it into a boy and girl, the first of the human race. Alright, we got one more interesting tidbit um, to find in the Codex. We'll see where that goes. But before that, we need to finish the last little bit of the map, because... Okay, I'm going to show you on the map, because see, this, that's kind of a lot of wasted space if this is what they're actually... If this is how they actually did it. Alright, so... I double-checked, and this is literally all the map. Look at all that empty space they put there. Like, this is not a thing you can enter... This is not an area you can enter. This is an area you can enter. Like, all of that you can enter in this area is through here. So, there's really not much left in this game in terms of, like, content. Which really surprises me, honestly. We'll, we'll mark it that way just so I'm going in that direction. Not getting lost as much. Oof. Eight. Oh, I'm gonna start hunting. Thirteen meat. 25 oil. Stop st I mean, I'd rather they steal my oil than my valuables, to be completely honest. Okay. Need to cut through here and find all and see what we can find over this way. I also need more meat. I need to be able to get those. I need to maybe... I'm probably going to have to farm rations at some point. Give me more meat. 19 meat this time. Excellent. Oh, it's one of these things. Yay. There, it's fully replenished at the watering hole. The watering hole? What's so great about the watering hole? Okay. There's that. Keep going up here. Gonna avoid up oh, treasure chest, chest, treasure chest. There we go. Great. More valuables. More valuables. Um. For preserving, so anacona. Preserve. There we go. Twelve meat, and nine rations. Hell yeah.
right, 225, 252 more. Nice. Oh, I see there is a cairn. Huzzah. A chart the mountains. How much do I have on chart the mountains left? Two more for that. And then that should be it for that. All, all the rest of these are um, our other quest lines. So we'll see. Oh. There we go. 22 wood. 13 Edison. Go this way. Gotta be something up here, right? Yes, there is. Another one of the uh, cairns. Which is important. Go. Couldn't get as far as I wanted, unfortunately. Watering hole. Go to the watering hole. Lots of meat. Yay. Do that more often. There's a mountain pass up here now, too. Excellent. Now, treasure chest first. Or anything else. Give me some valuables. Keep moving this way. See if we can find things that we can see over here. Looks like it's mostly just going to be herbs, but that's never a bad thing. Okay, time to do a bunch of preserving. Uh, well, I'm gonna preserve that. Um, how much would you get if you preserved? Lopez, preserve. You. And Reyes, preserve, just so we get that last one out of the way, too. Three meat, 28 rations. Excellent. Can we go further this way? Maybe? Injured horse. You hear a small commotion from the back of your caravan. Shortly, Teresa Sanchez rides up to you. Excuse me, Capitan Villarejo. Rosalia's horse has stepped into a hole and injured its leg. It's possible it will be able to continue without being slowed down too much, but it's safer if we take the time to fix the horse's leg. We don't want to risk it giving out on Rosalia. Very well. We will stop for however long it takes to fix the horse. You order everyone to stop so Sanchez can treat Rosalia's horse. It takes several hours, but eventually the horse's leg is properly set and treated, and you are set out again. Okay. I guess I, I guess that kind of just cut into some of our... I guess... I'm guess... Okay. Uh, that looks like it doesn't actually lead anywhere. So I guess we'll move into this little square here, section right here. Or nearby caverns. Hi, Kwana. Explore the cavern. You go hunting... Hunting, hunting, uh, herb, dank herb, and meat, find valuables, yay! Let's go back this way towards the temple again. Where are there, where are my boars? There's a boar. I'm an artist. Oh. There we go. Keep going. Okay. Up. Uh, explore the nearby caves again, caverns again. Uh, Anna, you should be able to preserve pretty well. Go back to hunting. Okay. That works. Fashions. Essex soldiers. Anaconda come, came back empty handed. That's okay, Anaconda. Let's keep going this way. Ah, grab you. Slowly but surely. I wish I could sell some of my like excess like building materials for wraps and the like. Because I think that that would make it better for... Because that would mean that I'd be... It would be nice to be able to do that specifically because that way I can... Um, or... I can make it so that I um, can like offset some of my costs by with that. I don't know. 
I don't think I made any sense there. Okay, um, through the mountain. Let's go through the mountain pass again. Let's go through the mountain pass. Aha! We have a village here. Amaz Amazon territory. Okay. So this is so this is their village. Interesting. How do we get to it? Go this way, maybe. Okay. So now we have something. Now we have a common purpose. Guessing... Okay. Wait. How do I... Okay, so it's telling me to go this way. How do I? Okay, how do I get the Amazon thing? Oh, sorry about that. How the hell do I find these Amazons? Ladies, ladies, ladies. I mean, I guess I could just come back later. One second. Something drop. There we go. Don't need that dropping. Important. Um, I guess for right now, since I don't really know what to do with that, um, I guess we'll just go back this way. Camping. More meat. Gain rations. So let's actually just head back this way. We'll head back this way, and we'll deal with the Amazons once I've fully explored the whole map. Because I can still, once I go past, through the mountain pass again... If I go through the mountain pass again, I can hang a left for me at east. This way? And this way? Oh, that's... I gotta go further? Is there a way to through here? I think there is, yeah. Okay. Okay, there we go. I got a spike trap. Neat. Good job, game. Where the hell does this lead? Actually lead anywhere. It does! The ancient temple. Ooh. Pig. Pig. Kill the pig, kill the pig. Kill the pig! There we go. Alright, ancient temple. Let's save up. Go. Wait, what? Oh, it's because it's down there. Got it. Oh my god, it's so far around. Why is it so far around? Oh well. Oh well. I'll have to deal, I guess. Serve. Serve. Preserve. There we go. I still got decent hunting, so. There we go. All right. We'll get there eventually, I guess. Oh yeah, he wanted me to... That's the, that's the house where the guy wants me to get him a uh, sample of the plague. Basically. There we go. 23 metal. I'd rather take the 23 metal than, um... I'd rather take the loss of 23 metal than the loss of valuables, right, at this moment. Are we really almost done with all the co with the content for this game? That's so surprising. I thought there would be a lot more. I guess this was a game by a... Is this the first game for this studio? I actually don't know. Okay, let's... There we go. 
Okay. Um, I guess you can preserve so that everyone else can do their thing. All rations. There we go. Herbalism. How many more cairns do I have? I have one more cairn, so after that I can validate my maps of the of the mountains. So I think it's probably in this area, right? Probably in this yeah, it's probably in this little dark area. I can't I have it. It's probably in this area that I unmapped area. Uh, let's go over here. Okay. All right, you back to hunting. You, Teresa, back to herbalism. Torches too, nice. There you are. Grab you. Grab you too, Mr. Pig. There we go. So we go here. There we go. Start the mountains. Okay, now we can consolidate our hold on the mountain. And we head back this way. And here we go. There is not going to be much much more of this game to uh, game. Consolidate. Serve. There we go. Trading new, treading new ground. I have completely found every. I have consolidated all the maps of the area, and I think I basically have everything in the area again. So, this is like the last area I have not explored. Well, besides the ruins that I think are the ruins for the um, for the Texcoco for the uh, for the fighting against the Aztecs, which the more I hear about the Aztec society and how shitty they're being to the people around them, the more I'm like, maybe it would be good to overthrow them, but like, I don't know if I'd be replacing them with people, tribal raiders. Moving through the mountains, your expedition is intercepted by a group of tribal warriors. They look malnourished and poorly equipped, but there's rather a lot of them. Got ahead to get an overview of the situation. Uh, Montego deftly crawls up the side of a cliff and out of view. A few minutes later, he returns, wipe, wiping the sweat from his brow. I see five warriors, three trappers, and a shaman. They are very power poorly equipped and seem to be in poor fighting condition. They look starved, Captain. Shout up to them in greeting. Reyes walks off to you. Captain, I think this is, a, in this case, the best we can hope for in terms of diplomatic dialogue is to put the fear of God into these savages and hope they will, be, they will flee. Reyes! Whoa, dude, whoa! Something tells me they are unlikely to respond well to peace of talk of peace and mutual understanding. All right, everyone, fire a volley over their heads, then bang your weapons on your shield. The carts, anything you can do to make as much noise as humanly possible. Your troops do as they say, first discharging their arquebuses towards the enemies, then making as much of an ungodly ruckus as they possibly can. Panic screams and rustling leaves indicates that your tactic has had the desired effect on most of the savages, and yet a handful of warriors and trappers rush out from the wilderness to throw themselves at you as one might attack a pack of horrifying monsters. Alright. Don't say we didn't warn you. Six best men. Five of them. Uh oh, why are all my all my melee people are on one side, all my ranged and not technically combatant people are on another? What the fuck? That's not cool, game. I don't like that you did that, game. That's rude. Oh, quit quit beating my wife. That's mean. Ow! What a dick. Argonis, can you get over there? Please? You cannot get over there in time, damn it. You can get over there to at least give her a flanking bonus, I guess. Well, okay. All right, Ayana. No, that's not going to help much. Uh, beat his ass. You fire. Oh, nice block. Nice, good block, good block. Um, done this bitch. 
Get your ass over here. How far can you go? Uh, there we go. Not a not the best starting round for me, but it'll have to do, right? All right. And let's back you up a bit. There we go. Oh, no. Oof. This ain't good. This is not good. This is very not good. That was a interesting decision. A bold strategy. Let's see how it let's see how it plays out for him. And <laughs> it did not play out well. All right. First off, heal you again. Heal heal my wife again. Uh, Trevino, just deal with this one and then come over. You fire at that one. Miss, you're not supposed to do that, but all right. Ooh, Diana. There we go. Ow. Three of them left. Let's stun you. There we go. Not much else you can do. Ow. Haha. -ha. Um, dab you, shoot you, there we go, dab you, Isabella, finish him off, then let's have you faint this way. There we go. And move up. Move up to flank. So now that he can't move, that one can't move without doing something very poor, uh, making a very poor decision. Move you up. All right. I salvaged that. Oh, well. You tried your best, but in the end, it didn't matter. Flawless victory. Your troops do as you say. First, is, okay. The tribe, the battle is over, and you stand victorious. All the tribals are either dead or dying. Search the corpses. Your troops and servants go over the corpses and recover a few bits of usable equipment, some valuable trinkets, and a bit of primitive medicine. Nice. Good job, everyone. Good job, team. All right. Going this way. Almost to the temple, and we're gonna find loot. There we go. You be on hunting, you, and then actually let's have Reyes do some preserving. There we go. There we go. Spike trap. Who else can we upgrade right now? I can't upgrade any. I can't up, let's upgrade Lopez, so I have uh, another uh, guy who's better with patrolling again. Oh no, 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 no! I, let's upgrade Figueroa because I need a person with better. I need more. I need better patrol. Good patient followers. Actually, that's pretty good. There you go. There, better percentage on his ability to guard. Wavering. All right. Now let's enter this temple. I'll first get the loot, get the herbs. And we have a temple to find. We have a temple to enter. Let's check it out. All right. According to the locals of the many small settlements in the valleys of these mountains, the summit of one of the more imposing peaks is home to the ancient temple of Quetzalcoatl, where untold fortune is granted to anyone pious enough to reach the temple and sacrifice their wealth to the Feathered Serpent. Oh, you want me to sacrifice valuables, do you? You follow the directions of the natives and come to a long staircase snaking up to a large pyramid at the top of the mountain. 
Ascending the stairs to the top of the temple, your expedition enters a door to a room filled with the treasures and artifacts pilgrims have given to Quetzalcoatl over the centuries. You are now faced with a choice. Uh, claim all the valuables in the name of King Carlos to bring with you back to Spain at the risk of gravely offending the gods, or leave all your valuables here as an offering to Quetzalcoatl. That's a lot of, um, a lot of valuables. I'm going to take them. You order the va your people gather everything, packing it away in their saddlebags, and then leave the way you came. On the way down from the mountains, some of your expedition members begin to feel dizzy and unwell. This quickly spreads to the rest of your expedition, and soon everyone is sick, suffering from some unknown disease, doubtedly, doubtlessly attributed to your audacious theft. Only you and some of your, those of your servants who haven't touched the loot remain in fighting form. Oh, everyone is harmlessly diseased. That's not good. Okay, new plan. New plan. So first... First, I need to get my doctors out of the way. I need to get my doctors treated. I get my doctors treated. Because once I get my doctors treated, they can start doing more as well. Staring is caring. The night is dark and the moon nowhere to be seen through the thick canopy above you. The clothes of your skin and your men hang heavy and cling to the skin. From his tent, the sick Miguel Sicard is struggling... Uh, to re find rest, the damp air inducing one cough fit after the other. As the night progresses, some of your followers grow annoyed until finally Antonio Velasquez gets up and marches over to the scholar's tent and shouts out, Shut the hell up, I'm trying to sleep and you're making it possible, you wretch. I'm Miguel Sicart tries to formulate something, but as soon as the first word escapes his lips, another barrage of coughs fails, falls upon the diseased scholar. Ah, watch it. Antonio Velasquez stumbles backwards out of the tent. He is clearly upset and disgusted, wiping spit off his face. The doctor storms back toward his tent, mumbling something under his breath. After a while, things calm down and people finally fall asleep, most from exhaustion. The next morning, the humid air still hangs like a damp cloth clinging to your face. As your men rally to begin the day's march, you and find Antonio Velasquez looking utterly miserable. It is clear that whatever disease Sicart was carrying has now infected Velasquez. I just fucking healed you, you fucking... Oh! Oh, that's... Anger inducing. That is anger inducing. What the fuck? That is anger inducing. The fucking. Oh, I am angry about that. I'll go for my fucking rations, too. Aragones, what are, how are you at, Aragones? Really diseased. Curated. Fuck. Might have to save scum because I'm not. I'm not letting this bullshit stand. Honestly. Oh, we're completely good. All right. Let's get our most. Let's get. All right. We need you. I need you healed. And who is the most severely? Find. There we go. Mission is improved. God, is this actually bleeding into my valuables too? I already lost like 2,000 of the valuables I would have had anyway, so this is fucking... I don't think it was worth it to come here then. I'm gonna probably save scum. I can't fucking do this shit correctly. 18 medicine... Uh, let's see. So she's good now too. I need. Okay, I need I need the critically diseased people healed now. Harmlessly, 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 moderately, critically, fine. He is not great either. Our right, is curated. Okay, fuck. Ah, oh, god, this is so fucking frustrating. Okay, Anaquanas. Healed, assign. We'll fucking do this. I will fucking make sure all of you are fucking... This cost me way more than it was worth. This cost me way too much. I might just say fuck it. And resave. Because this is a lot of resources I'm losing. 
and I'm and I don't really care about like Essek attack. Go outside. Essek warriors, eight of them snuck by our eagle warrior, binding warrior. They must have snuck past. I I can't fight with that, unfortunately. So unfortunately for this game. I'm gonna do some I'm gonna reload. I, I just can't. I'm not I can't deal with that. That's way too much. Fucking punishing, which is fair. So, new plan. I will come back here later. When I have way less valuables. And I will just give those fucking valuables to Ketzel Quaddle. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back up to the fortress then. Because that seems way more fair. Going, wait, there's a mountain pass that goes... Oh, wait, I mean, the roads do kind of make it go faster, I guess. Jesus Christ, Mary and Joseph. So, not doing that. That, that strategy can go fuck itself. So, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. That would... That would have fucking, that would have ruined my, um, that would have ruined my, uh, my ability to do anything, because I was out of medicine, I was constantly losing things, I was, I feel like I was gonna eventually lose all of the money, valuables I'd gotten from there because of that, so, like, it's not worth it, and I'm not, and I'm not gonna suffer the consequences of that, I'm just gonna say I didn't do it, and then I'll come back and I'll offer, like, a hundred or I'll offer like a hundred gold. I'll offer all my valuables in my um. I'll offer all my valuables inside of the uh. After I store most of them in here. I try to get some more rations on the way too. Just so I can stockpile those. Bring smallpox to. I'll bring smallpox to this land, too. Sure. God, that's a long way to the fortress. Okay, there we go. Let's keep going. Keep going. I can get a long way with this. Especially since part of it goes through Tenochtitlan. But while we're in Tenochtitlan, let's go here real quick. Browse the br trade. High supply of everything. Low demand for everything, so they don't really want anything. Leave. Not yet. Leave. Alright, let's just keep going up, I guess. Luckily for me, the roads go ever on and on, down from the door where it begun. All right, keep, keep grabbing stuff on the way too, so we can start doing more preserving. Uh, so if I can get like a good head start on the rations, that would be very helpful. Farmer, you meet a native on the road. He is in his best years and looks quite strong, but years of work have already chiseled deep lines into his face. He walks with an empty cart, which is being dragged by two strong, healthy, delicious-looking oxen. He stops as you approach and warily waits for you to wait for you for your expedition to pass. Greetings. He kneels. I am unworthy. What is your name, peasant? He looks rather confused that you might care to know. What, please, sire? I would like. Will you sell me both of your oxen, Otli? He shakes his head nervously. I cannot sell both of these animals, sire. My livelihood will depend on them. I understand. Will you just sell me one of them, then? Uh, he thinks for a moment. Then he pulls one of his oxen forward. If you will pay 200 valuables, I will give you this one. Let's say 300 for your trouble. And jaws, draw sharp. Sire? A noble gesture, Captain. 300 valuables is more than fair for such a fine, strong ox. 300 valuables it is. Arrange the transaction. 
Uh, your servant brings 300 valuables from your carts to the uh, farmer, and he gives them to the ox in, in return. The ox is immediately brought to the back of the caravan and slaughtered. It's meat added to your stores, while the ecstatic farmer leaves the way he was going with his remaining ox. Excellent. A perfectly good transaction for everyone. Trade. No supply of medicine. Give him that. That. There we go. Take all of his. Take all of his valuables. And I have way more rations now. Yay! I can just get a good. I can just get a good increase up of like. Get a good increase of like. 200, 250, maybe I can, maybe I'll be able to do that quest. A lot of herbs to herbs too, so I'm gonna get make back a lot of my medicine. Alright. Have this area now. Let's see. Ask a villager to follow you to Tenochtitlan. You wander around the village for a while until you find a young man who odds with obvious signs of smallpox. You take him aside and ask him if he would be willing to travel to Nochtitlan with you to see a shaman. The young man, who is called Iquatil, appears relieved and hopeful at the prospect of getting out of the village. You agree to meet up at the outskirts of the village when you leave. Unfortunately, word that there may be a way out of the, this hell spreads like wildfire. You soon find yourself surrounded by starving villagers looking for you to liberate them. Try to calm them down. You manage to calm them down before the situation escalates and explain to them that you can only bring one person. They discuss that among themselves for a while and agree Equadal should be the one to join you. As you leave the village, you find Equadal standing where you agreed to meet and he joins your party. Your followers keep their distance from him as they don't want to catch the disease. Fair enough. Nothing noticeable has come to Quatitlan. Uh, it's still the monument to the fair. The chieftain is still alive, but he still needs his wife to fetch for him. Uh, wait, was there a thing where they wanted me to get food for them? Prepare the plastic effort to travel to Quatic Line and get them to relinquish the food they owe to Nostalgia I will not touch that particular quest line just yet. Oh, let's see. Going for... There we go. Get that boar meat. A lot of boar meat, hell yeah. We feasting tonight, boys. Uh, just for the second, Therese, let's see. Let's Who shall we have on here? Reserve. 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 We get all of it? I don't know. We'll try. Hunt. Sure, do some do a little bit of hunting, Rosilia. And one meat, and we got forty-four rations. Hell yeah. That'll do. That'll do. We're gonna lose some we're gonna lose some of them. Due to the math of the situation, but... Oh, look. Look at that. More meat. Meat, 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 meat. Good, 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 good. Alright, let's see. Preserve all that, yes. Please preserve all that. You go hunting just so there's a little bit more hunting going on. Hell yeah. Man, I I asked for more meat rations and they gave me more rations. Ex it's so nice of them to actually be nice about that. Uh, I can give them medicine. Seven for medicine. As much as I can manage. I just need to keep getting more valuable. I just need to slowly accumulate as many valuables as I can. Hunt la leave. Oh, 
There we go. Almost back home. It'll be nice to be back home. So close. And yet so far. There's only a couple boars around where I live, too, so that'll be fun. Alright, what do we got? Okay, gonna get a little auto assign. Everyone auto assign. Auto assign. Uh Sanchez though, start doing more herbalism. Get us get get us a bunch of that medicine back. Seven meat. And we've almost been here a year and we've already done so much for this place. I'm quite proud of my of my little company of my band of merry men. What can I do for you today, senor? Trade. More of that. More of that. We'll rest here real quick. Our horse is the pasture, so now we have 80. Grab you. Under Umberto's supervision, your workers have completed their reconstruction of the old chapel, and they are once again at your disposal. Every seven days, you can visit the chapel in your courtyard to gain a small morale increase for any pious followers in the expedition. All right, let's see how many soldiers we have to barracks now. 392 soldiers, more than half of the upper limit on how many people can live here. Your force is starting to look quite formidable indeed. Very nice. Expand the fortress. Uh, let's see, we'll build a tavern. Building a tavern will let you buy a round of drinks every week to give a small morale boost to all your followers. You will also be able to pick up hints and rumors from the tavern keeper. It'll take six days and cost you a thousand valuables. Very good. I can't wait to get started, but mostly I can't wait to get it finished so we can finally have a drink around here. I concur. Fortress Chapel. The chapel is watched over by an old monk from the same order as Hermano Caro in Santo Domingo. In fact, he looks star startlingly similar to Caro, enough that you mistake him for his brother at first, uh, probably because they use the exact same art asset. Uh, you must be Capitan Villarejo. My name is Perez. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. I must thank you from the bottom of my heart for building this chapel, so that I may have a chance to spread the word of God in this new land. Have you come here to join me in prayer? Do you know Hermano Caro in Santo Domingo? His face lights up with a warm smile. Caro. Yes, of course. He is a member of my order, and as dear to me as if he were my brother by blood. Are you sure you're not clones? We shall pray. You accept Hermano Perez's invitation and join him in prayer along with the most devout of your followers. Alright, we're making good we're making good progress on my oh, but before that. Before that, we need to store some stuff. Store some resources. Deposit resources. I already have 220 rations. I did not realize that. Well, let's just dump a bunch of you in here. Let's get you down to... as much as we can. I want to make... Because I do not want... Now let's go. Let's do that. There we go. And let's get all these rations out. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now I can now I can go help uh now I can go help get those um, get those one people some food. I have 80 space to do that with. Um make that the active quest actually. That will be Silence Coyotal. We'll do that one. That'll be our active quest right now. Alright, we should be able to get over there in a few days. This was, like, providence, it feels like. Get the hell out of here. I'm running out of, like, ability to, like, actually do stuff with my money, with my money, though. I'm gonna have to, like, be very good about selling rations. I, I could go, I could try to go, I need to go back to, I, at some point, I'm gonna have to go back to that port, right? 
Jesus, I have way more than I need. It's amazing. I love it. Oops. I want you to go this way. Like merchant merchants. You have no particular re relationship with them. Thought I did, but alright. Guess not. Uh medicine. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Leave them alone. This is great. Man, things turned around real quick. L to the yes. I've still got to... Man, that movement bonus is so nice. I didn't even realize I had that many rations in my... Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize I had that many rations stockpiled up. That's really neat. I, I really approve of that. Also, I have so many soldiers now. And apparently I still can fill up, fill up at least a bit more. That's insane. Uh, yeah, you're still doing herbalism. Keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going, going, going. It's gonna take us to... It's gonna take us another day and a half to get there. Which is alright with me. I think if I do this next bit, it's gonna cause a person... So I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to fill in two quests actually fill two quests actually while I'm here. I'm gonna get the one guy to uh to the doc to the shaman, which will also bring smallpox into Nochitlan, which whoops. It was gonna happen eventually, but oh well. Here we go. There we go. This is great. I'm having a good day. Things are coming up, Millhouse. Things are coming up, Bruno. People say you shouldn't talk about Bruno when he's doing such a good job. What news from Tenochtitlan? I just thought I'd drop by and make sure Tenochtitlan had didn't send somebody to else to kill you yet. Poyota laughs earnestly. No, not yet, my friend. I thank you for your concern, but I have pressing matters to attend to. Please come back when you've taken care of my problem. Oh, well, you're in luck. I have the solution to your problem. I have 300 rations you need. Toyoto stands up and bows deeply. He looks genuinely moved by your curiosity. I accept your gener generous donation. Have your servants deliver the food to our compound and Matla will never hear from me again. Deliver the 300 rations. Your tremendous generosity earns you strong praise from some of your people and their vocal celebration of your selfless act deter any criticism from the rest of your expedition members. Hell yeah. Your servants quietly load a huge delivery of rations into a cart and transport it to Coyoto's compound, where he and his warriors stand ready to receive it. When all rations have been delivered, Coyoto gives you his shield as proof for Matlal. Then he bids you farewell with many thanks. Alright. Hell yeah. So now we can do the spotted curse. You ended up giving Coyoto the rations you needed to go out of your own, and you've got his shield in return. Go back to the market and touch the line to give Matlal the shield. Sounds good. Let's do that real quick. Oh, you know, Matt Lau's in the palace. Whoops. Oh, no. You find Matt Lau on the market near where he approached you before. Child of the Sun, you br return from Texcoco. Do you bring good news concerning Coyoto? I'll show him the shield. His face and his impeccably polite facade is lit up with joy. Fantastic. I consider the agreement, the terms of our agreement fulfilled, and I will have my servants bring a cartload of medals and valuables to your caravan. It has been a distinct pleasure doing business with you. The merchant bows and leaves... Um, make the arrangements. You return to your carts and half an hour later, four overtaxed servants arrive with an old wooden cart loaded with iron ore and gold. Hell yeah! Objective finished. I have more stuff I can upgrade too. Uh, let's keep it down though for right now. In the meantime, 
let us go talk to and uh, let's go talk to um, this gentleman over here. You return with Equatili in tow, who is obviously impressed with the buildings and the size of the city. People stop and stare at the spotted man, but he seems oblivious to the attention he's getting, entirely focused on his surroundings. When you enter the plaza, Patli greets you with open arms and a large smile on his face, which, much to your disbelief, becomes even bigger as he spots the patient you've brought along. By the gods, it's even more amazing than I imagined. Come, my friend, let me have a look at you. Patli offers to you to wait in the plaza as he leads Equatli to his house. He is gone for a long time, and you and your men wait in the sun. Just as you are about to leave, Fatli steps back outside. He hands Iquatli a small bag, for which the boy seems very grateful. Fatli speaks a few words to the boy, though he's too far away for your translator to make any sense of it. Finally, Fatli gives the small boy a, uh, the, the boy a small piece of what looks like bark, and Iquatli looks awestruck. Fatli then turns and walks towards you. Iquatli wanders off the way he came, uh, looking intently at whatever Fatli gave him. Not paying attention to where he's walking. What did you tell him? I've sent the boy home. Don't worry, I gave him some remedies and supplies for your journey. He'll be fine. Before you leave, I want to thank you for bringing him here. Unfortunately, I don't have much to offer in terms of worldly goods. However, thank you for letting me examine this man. The crusts and boils I gathered will no doubt yield a lot of knowledge. I can't offer much as a thank you in terms of worldly goods. However, go on. I am tired of treating the same ailments every day. While it see, gives me pleasure to help the sick, I feel I may make more of a difference in service to you. Potley looks earnest, yet optimistic, with an ever-present smile. His experience as a doctor is evident all around you and, and speaks for itself. Why not? Uh, Potley breaks out in laughter. His joy is palpable and infectious, and your men can't help but smile, despite whatever prejudice them they may harbor. Potley excuses himself for a moment and runs inside his house before re-emerging shortly after with a bundle slung over his shoulder can't help but notice a slight discoloration around the bottom of the bag. I'm going to inquire about it. You ask what that's in the bag, to which Potley smiles and explains with great enthusiasm, Hearts! Come again? Hearts! For the ground, so they make blossom. Some of your expedition members look at you with an expression of doubt and repulsion, no doubt wondering what kind of madman you have let join your expedition. Oh joy, I have let, I have let an insane man join. What wonders they shall give for me. Potley is a shaman. I'll upgrade him. Earth puts a penalty on the range targets range accuracy and defense for three turns. Okay. Seems like the type of guy I'd rather not be in melee. If I can help it too. Um. Favored fencer. Fade constitution. Avenger adrenaline junkie. I really don't like the list of like beats that you can give them it's really not great really kind of not not as like night interesting as I, I was hoping they'd be oh there's a five percent chance attack I, I know i've read these before but sometimes i forget about them it's supposed to be i guess i could just give them a bigger weapon give him a spear herbalism well he's another person i can add to herbalism um and we'll put some more in hunting too having another person hunting or another person being herbal an herbalist. Never a bad thing. Okay, so now there's a few other things that we can do. So I think the next thing that we should do is kill Chitlatli Talali, the war chief of the warrior women west of Tenochtitlan, and return to Momo still. So, so we'll do that one next. That one is how do I do that? How do I do that actually though? Because I I went to where the warrior women, the Amazon compound is, but I don't know how to actually get them to actually come with me. Which is the thing. How do I... I can't get it. Okay, that's apparently apparently not what I can do. Um. Alright, uh, that sounds about right then. Let's see. Leave... Can I do here? Maybe. Can I do something here? Maybe. Not yet. Thief. Marketplace. Nothing there. There we go. Expensive prices. Yeah, because they're not. They don't have any like specific favors for me. From me. Uh, let's see. I have a decent amount of valuables. I have herbs and perishables I can deal with. 
I think I'm in a really solid position, honestly. I mean, I have, I think, almost half of what I need. I think I have, like, almost half of what I need for, like, valuables-wise. And then, get you out of the way. Let's put spike traps up. What is this? Cannonballs. Place the cannon. Fire an explosive cannonball from the damage cannon that damages five random adjacent tar spaces in the target space. That would be fun. The Golden Spear. Throw the Golden Spear at a certain hex. It will land at the start of your next turn and deal 150 damage minus defense to whatever unit occupies the space at that time. Jesus Christ. That is honestly kind of cool. Barricade. And torches. I wonder if I can sell that stuff if I never actually... No, I can't because it's fucking equipment and they don't allow you to sell equipment for no reason. For some reason. Oh well. Well, we'll figure out what we're going to do next time. I got a lot done, surprisingly, even though it didn't start out like it would be. Anyway, toodles.